The other reason that I really like using smart filters is it lets me experiment with filters that in the past I would have probably given up on because they were too complicated. And every time you went to try something, it was like starting all over again. And a good example of that is a filter called Displace. Displace is a really interesting filter that in the right environment can make it look like for example, words are painted on the doorway or a, a logo or whatever it might be. But the problem, as you'll see, in the past was always when I went to apply the filter, it gave me this dialog boss and just said, how, mu how much would you like to displace? And you're like, I have no idea. So you'd have to click OK, and if it didn't work, undo three steps and try it again. And it's still, you still don't know what number to type in when it's smart, but at least it's easier to update. And the way that uh, the displace filter works is it uses something called displacement map, which says, I will use whatever you give me to determine by like shadows and highlights how to bend whatever it is to fit. And so the simplest way to do that is to just duplicate whatever you're going to use as your background, and I'm going to duplicate it into a new document and just click OK. So I could have easily just said duplicate document either way. And this document has to be a PSD file. It has to be the same size. It's basically a copy of the same photo. In earlier versions of Photoshop, you had to convert it to a grayscale for this to work. That's no longer the case. I only discovered that recently because in a habit I kept always then converting to grayscale. And then one time I forgot to and it still worked. And I was like, oh, look at that. They obviously, somewhere along the way they changed that and no one bothered to say anything. So um, what I would potentially do, maybe not as much in this case, but if I had like, say, I don't know, a brick wall where it was really strong texture in the brick, not just the, the, you know, the grout, but the bricks themselves. I might try and blur it just a bit because it would be so textured that whatever you're trying to overlay on top would be hard to see. So sometimes I might, this is the rare time you'd actually see me apply a filter directly instead of smart because all I'm trying to do is make it not quite so textured and sharp. I want to really just have the contours. So a simple way to do that, and there's a filter called Despeckle which doesn't give you any settings, but it kind of does a form of surface blur so that the details, like the edges will still be there, but any fine detail will be taken away a little bit. So usually what I do on, in I would say many of these backgrounds is do the Despeckle filter and then there's a nice little shortcut, Command or Control F means the filter you just did, do it again. So I find often doing it twice is just the right combination of keeping the, the edge detail but softening the other part just a little bit. And I have to save this as a PSD. Now, I talked before about old habits, old habits die hard. Here's an old habit of mine that's absolutely not necessary, but I still do it because I'm always afraid I'm going to forget which is the one that's called this displacement map. So I always put the word map in the name, even though it's not at all necessary technically. It's just when I go looking for it, I want to make sure I pick the right one. So that's, you can call it anything you want, but technically what we're creating right now is called a displacement map, which is how the displace filter works. So if you just went to displace without anything else, you'd kind of go, it would just pop up a dialog box, you wouldn't know what to do. So generally, although I'll show you an example of where you don't have to, this is where I would start, is making this first and then save it. Once it's saved, it served its purpose. So I'm going to take my text tool, but again, this could be a graphic or whatever you want. Let's get some text on here. Make it really big. Let's use, I always like to use this font because it's nice and big so you can see what's happening. Okay, make it even bigger. So my goal is to make this look like it's painted on the wall and has been there for a while. So I'm trying to go for that grungy kind of look and just to make our more fun, let's do that. And let's rotate it just a little bit. So whoever painted this just wasn't very good because they tilted it. No, that, that would bother people, so let's make it more tilted. All right, so before I show you the smart filter thing, let's revisit one of the topics we talked about with the not so obvious ways of doing things faster in Photoshop because Whenever I see a situation like this, I'm going to try this first just to see what it does, and I might just find that's good enough, or I might incorporate it as part of my smart filter, and that's that thing we talked about called the blend if sliders, where it lets you play around with gradual opacity, not just global. So I do that by double-clicking, and I go here to the underlying layer and start to 
pull this and you'll see it's letting some of the darker areas show through that. And I might, if I, let's look at it closer. See, it's already helping and maybe if I change the blend mode to something like overlay, I mean, okay, we're done, never mind. Uh, I mean, I could leave it like that. I'm not going to because I want it to really feel like it's changing, but that wanted to point out that sometimes I think we jump too quickly into filters and things where sometimes a combination of like blend if sliders and a blend mode, you might be pretty darn close to the look you want. Well, I'm going to put that back for a second so you see more clearly the way it was before. Okay. So in order for me to experiment with the displace filter, this type layer has to be smart because that's what I'm applying the filter to. I'm not applying the filter to the wall, I'm applying it to the text. So I convert that to a smart object. Then I go filter, distort, displace. And here's where the challenge comes in because this, again, this dialog box just says, how much would you like to horizontal and vertical scale? I have no idea. And there's no preview, so you can't say, well, let me try. And this always used to be the problem that would stop people. They'd kind of give up on it because they'd go back and forth like 14 times trying to find the right number. And that part doesn't change, but at least it's easier. It's not like you're starting from scratch every time. So I'm going to take a wild guess and just put 20 and 15. And that's by the only thing I would say is I often don't go too much higher than that because it looks so distorted it's not re realistic. But so as a general rule of thumb, I would say I'm going to be 25 or less, but it really is going to depend. When you click OK, the next thing it does is say, what would you like to use as your displacement map? It says, choose a displacement map. Well, if I hadn't done that duplicate the wall thing first, at this point I would have been like, oh, OK. <laughs> now, theoretically, you could pick any PSD file and use that as a displacement map, but it's not tied to this particular photo, which is why it works much be better most of the time if you just, if you pick one that you have created for this purpose specifically. So I click open, it's going to take that displacement map and now if we look you can see how the edges of it are really following more the edge of it. And I would still tend to change the blend mode to something like overlay but you see now it, it really looks much more like it's been painted trying to paint on something that has surface. My feeling is it's still, it may be a little much so if I double click now I can say maybe I only want the horizontal 10 and this 20. When I click OK, I still have to reapply that same map, but it's still much quicker than the previous version where you had to pretty much scrap it and start again. So I find myself, this was a filter I used to use years ago, but every so often I kind of give up on it because it just took so much effort now that I know I can at least try those numbers a little more quickly. Um, the other reason that's kind of nice is that in the this filter is using a displacement map and right now it's, the words are right here, so it, it's distorted there. If I went to move the words over here, it wouldn't necessarily match up anymore, but now I could just reapply the filter to match up to this new part of the wall. Because it is using the underlying photo to do the distorting. So if I moved it to a very different part of the image, it might look okay, but the chances are I'd have to rerun that displace filter for it to really look better. Okay. And as before, this is still type. So if I wanted to change it to something else, it's going to be allow me to update. So later today we're going to, actually next, we're going to talk about in the next class um, the whole concept of what I refer to as templates even though technically Photoshop doesn't call them that. If you think about it, this could be considered a template. Maybe you're doing a uh, bunch of senior photos where you're going to put the senior's photo right here and you want to put their name on the wall like it's painted on. Well, now I've already, I'm set to go. I just, for each person, I just type in the new name in that smart object and I'm good to go. Whereas if I was every time starting from scratch, that would take a lot of time. This way, even this could be considered a template in the sense that it's ready to be edited just by double clicking on here and putting a name in and then going on to the next one. Okay. Now, displace, that's kind of the I would say, I don't want to call it standard, but the most typical way of using the displace filter is taking a copy of the exact same background you're going to use and putting it on there.